September 13th, 1814. The War of 1812 is not going well for the American forces. At the end of August, just days earlier, the British had overtaken Washington, D.C., burning it to the ground and forcing the government to flee the capital. A string of British triumphs had brought the United States to the verge of disaster. The only victories the United States was really having were the victories, uh, small one-on-one -on -one ship engagements uh, at sea. Other than that, the war wasn't going especially well for the United States. After Washington, the English set their sights to the north. They'll regroup the British Navy, Navy Army working together and they'll look at their maps and decide that Baltimore is the next worthy target. All that stood between England and ultimate victory in the War of 1812 were the defenders of Fort McHenry. Sitting at the mouth of Baltimore Harbor, the fort was the final bastion between American morale and total defeat. As a fleet of almost 20 British ships descended on the city, a young American lawyer named Francis Scott Key approached the Armada on a mission of peace. And he's been dispatched to rescue Dr. Beans. Dr. Beans has been arrested by the British. They're going to hang the poor man. Francis Scott Key was the ideal candidate to lead the parlay. Born and raised in Maryland, Key was educated at St. John's College in Annapolis. The college was originally founded as the King William School. It is the third oldest college in the United States. It was founded so that the senators could have a good place to send their kids to college. Though Key entered college to study law, his education introduced him to a variety of subjects. People who were educated would study um, basically the seven liberal arts. In these rooms at St. John's College, Key's studies included seminars on math, music, linguistics, and the natural sciences. This broad education created a well-rounded individual. So when he began practicing law in Georgetown, outside Washington, D.C., he dabbled in hobbies like poetry. This pastime would prove advantageous on that cool September evening in Baltimore Harbor. Having secured the freedom of Dr. Beans, Key and his party of parlayers boarded their small vessel to head home, only to be stopped by the British commanders. He is successful, he's a very good attorney. They're, the British are ready to attack. You're not gonna release these men because they might have seen something. They might have some useful information for the American defenders. From his small boat in the midst of the harbor, he watched helpless as the British fleet unleashed a deadly 25-hour bombardment on Fort McHenry. As the attack started, he saw the flag over Fort McHenry and knew the fort was still in American hands. As darkness fell and the havoc of war engulfed the battlefield, he was plunged into uncertainty not knowing if the fort, along with hope for an American comeback, had fallen into British hands. Inside Fort McHenry, the defenders endured shell after shell of the British offensive. Upwards of 1,500 bombs, those bombs are 200 pounders, filled with powder, they explode. Rockets with 32 pound bombs on the tips, 700 of those. If you do the simple arithmetic, that works out to about a bomb a minute and a rocket every couple of minutes. As the long night wore on, Francis Scott Key could not know if the fort had surrendered. To alleviate his stress, he turned to writing poetry. The poem Key wrote reflects the confusion and uncertainty of the battle. Indeed, the first stanza ends with Key essentially asking if hope of an American future had been obliterated off the face of the earth. As dawn broke over the bay and the cannon fire subsided, Key caught a glimpse of Fort McHenry's massive American flag and knew that Baltimore was safe. It's a pretty good size flag. Just think of 15 stripes. It's, it's 15 stars, 15 stripes. Each one of those stripes is two feet wide. So when you and I stand up next to that flag, we just barely measure up to three stripes. It's a huge banner, very impressive, quite, quite a sight to see. After the British withdrew, Key released his poem to the people of Baltimore. Once set to music, the poem's popularity took off. By the mid-1900s, the first stanza of the poem became the United States National Anthem. The poem itself is a perfect reflection on the man that wrote it. Expressive, observant, eloquent, all characteristics that were developed during his childhood and education at St. John's College and cherished throughout his life. In the four short stanzas of the defense of Fort McHenry, Francis Scott Key created a seminal American poem that lets us see the battle through his eyes on a cool September morning by the dawn's early light. <laughs>